going on, bro? Trying to get down a few muffins here. Can you turn your mic up a bit or something? Can you hear me now? Now you're good. Great. What'd you say? Eating some food? Cream of rice. This is my meal three, but I'm having it for meal four. Nice. Yeah, that's good shit. Just a muffin? Two. Two muffins? Two muffins, two scoops of protein powder, and a banana, but I had that earlier today. It's a good meal. Yeah, yeah. We were doing, um because this is like my pre-workout meal. It's a rest day today, though. Mm -hmm. But we were doing cream of rice. And because I train at two o'clock with Antoine, and like my first two meals are so big, eating like 160 grams of cream of rice with like a ra raisins and a banana and peanut butter was just way too much. Like, because mm -hmm. I had to eat it at one yeah. and train, train at like two, two thirty. So I figured out that a chocolate chip muffin and a blueberry muffin and a banana and the two scoops of protein are like pretty much the exact same calories. It's like 30 more calories, I think, with the muffins, which is crazy because the volume of food is so much smaller. Yeah. And uh, and it digests way faster. I feel way better during the workout. And then I'm hungry by the time for my post-workout meal. For sure. So sure. Uh, I'm just I'm just sacrificing right now and doing what I have to do. Yeah. To put on the size. Like it's hard. You know, I wouldn't wish this on anybody, honestly, but yeah, I know. I gotta do what I gotta do. It's hard to eat muffins, man. <laughs> but the key is to have the key is to have one the one chocolate and the one blueberry. That's the secret. Yeah, hundred percent. Because halfway through the second muffin, if it's the same muffin, mm -hmm. you're gonna wish you got a different second muffin. Mm -hmm. 100%. So, everyone who's watching this comes with experience. You have to eat a lot of muffins to understand this. But when you put away as many muffins as I have, that have all been in my meal plan, by the way, you learn the tips and tricks. Yeah, for sure. If you had to eat just one food, like for like an eating contest. What food would you pick? Would you pick muffins? I think chocolate chip muffins are like my all-time favorite food. How many? Do you, how many do you think you could put down in one sitting? If there was like money on it, like, are we talking like Tim's? Out? Tim's muffins? Yeah, whatever muffins you want. Like, you can pick your food, but you gotta like max out. I want to say fifteen. Fifteen. I think I could do fifteen. Like, I think I think that's like realistic, but also like very challenging. What if you had to do two dozen for a million? Done. A million bucks, bro. <laughs> million bucks, dude. Easily slap on another ten muffins, no problem, dude. I can eat like I'm. I I know like I have like a special like ability to eat like a special digestive system. Like I can pack away more food consistently than a lot of people can, and I know and I know the way I am. Like when I'm hungry, I'm like I'm like let's go. Like I'll fucking go. So I think if I like if I knew I had to do something like that, and literally just like not even like a long fast. Like say if the eating contest was at six p.m. I just get up and like only drink water that day mm -hmm. until 6 p.m. Bro, uh, I might be able to do 30 muffins. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, for sure. Because I'm going to be hungry for the first like 12. <laughs> and I'm a fucking man, so I can definitely power through. Oh, yeah. The rest. Man, it's crazy. I, I actually was going to compete in an eating contest back when I was like 18 or 19. Yeah. But since I had an eating disorder at the time, I was like, ah, it's probably a bad idea. And it was, it was supposed to be like, it was like sometime during prep too. So I'm like, this is just a recipe for disaster, but it was uh smokes poutinery. Oh, so I don't know how they found me, but they, this is back in Facebook. They literally Facebooked me like, Hey, we're running this all you can eat contest. You know, we'd love to have you there as a guest, like free entry. And there was a prize. And I seriously considered it because my food mind was like, I could crush everybody. <laughs> but oh, it, was, yeah. it was literally two weeks out from the show. So obviously that didn't. <laughs> oh, how far out? Like two weeks out. Oh, yeah. Well, you would have fucked up your whole prep. Totally. It would have been so bad. You would have been like, like all the inflammation, especially you. Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, dude. But I'm um, getting over that. I, I've thought about it, but I don't think I could put down as much food as I could before. Like, I, I feel like now, like, like when I push to a certain point, I just get full and I'm like, I'm over the food. But then again, it's fucking off season. So if, if I was on prep, but. I still yeah. feel like my stomach can't handle what it used to. No, definitely not. I think I think with age too. Yeah, it definitely. I mean, and, and especially with us, like we probably processed as much food as most people do who like live to be like seventy. Yeah, true. And we're thirty. 
It's like putting mileage on your on your car. It's like same thing. Yeah. Just put mileage on the old digestive tract, you know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I I remember I could put down like a good probably eight or nine plates of the Mandarin. And now I'll do like two and I'm like, oh, I'm done. <laughs> I mentioned it about to Chloe about going there soon. Yeah, we just went there. That's why I'm like, I'm like, I can't believe like, like I just go in and just eat my meal portion basically, you know, it's like really weird. But, um, but again, it's just like totally different mindset when you're hungry though. Right. So yeah, I used to go I there. Do, man, like even th like when I think about like, all oh, you can eat Chinese, like I feel like that won't taste as good to me now as it maybe it did like back in the day. I no, I used to go. I, I used to go to the Mandarin specifically, like right after competitions, because it would be like the best place to fucking binge. No. You can you can get like a little bit of everything. So when I used to binge like crazy, the the goal was to obviously pack as much fucking food, and I would just try to get as much variety as I can. And then that would be the 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 secret is getting the variety and going back and forth between the sweet and the salty. Some some for some reason that that tricks your brain. So wait. Would you like get like a entree plate of food, get dessert, and then go back to an entree? Okay, I had a really specific like game plan when I would go to the Mandarin, but then there'd be like a post Mandarin uh -huh. plan as well. So going into the Mandarin, I would start with because my fucked up mind would want to start with healthy stuff like salads and like pack my stomach in with healthy stuff. Like it makes no fucking sense, but that's like believe me at its finest, right? What's going on, Justin? What's up? We're talking about uh, binging at the Mandarin, so. I'm Talking binge about what I used to binge really hard. Well, Robin, this is my exact strategy when I go to like all inclusive resorts. Yeah, yeah. Like before oh, lunch and supper, eat a big salad so I don't eat like too much dumb shit. Yeah, exactly. I'll do the same thing, like trick my brain. I'm doing something healthy, but then after the salad, then you just start getting dirtier and dirtier. You save the dirtiest for the end. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Why would you why would you eat salad on vacation? Well, it's just to trick your brain into thinking that you're doing <laughs> something like healthy. Not like badass. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> right, but I'm a fat ass anyway. That's the problem. Like Robin said, like I'll eat the salad, and then I'll still eat like a bunch of dumb shit, and I'll just be more full now because I have all this useless fiber in my stomach. Yeah, yeah. right. Oh man, I used to, but yeah, and then I used to go to the bulk barn, and I would get all different like samples of different stuff, and then that that's when you can just keep going. That shit doesn't do it for me, like candy and like like M and M's and that kind of stuff. Yeah, like I, I like it here and there, but I'm just more of like a muffin guy, cookie, like chocolate chip cookies. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. I used to have a big sweet tooth when I was like a kid. I used to really love sour candy like a lot. Dude, every Wednesday when I was a kid, I can't believe my mom let me do this. It was borderline child abuse. My mom used to also buy me way too much McDonald's. Um, I remember one time, I, I, it's funny that I remember this now. I was on like a basketball trip. I must have been 12. And I told my mom, like, she's like, what do you want to, like, I was like, get me the usual. And she brought me over two double Big Macs with a large fries. And I was like, mom, not in front of people. <laughs> <That's embarrassing>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I used to eat way too much. But yeah, every Wednesday I'd watch WWF Smackdown. Oh, yeah. And I would have a big bag of barbecue Doritos. And I would drink a two liter of Barks root beer. Like a full two liter for myself. As, as a child, as a child, <laughs> it all makes sense now. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have weird e eating habits when you were younger, Justin? No, I was. I was actually. I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't that of a like sweet tooth or even eating junk food that much. Um, I was always very active, and I was kind of like, uh, you know, like always like the skinny kid so I, I i was i was eating a lot of food trying to like gain a little bit of weight and this and that but not like weird stuff you know and i got actually into like um finding things to like understanding nutrition pretty early because mm -hmm. i was trying to get better at my sport you know at playing hockey you know yeah. so um so that's kind of where i started but i wasn't really like too much into fast food and stuff like that but I was like, even early on, like even like 14, 15, I was like tracking, you know, macros and stuff like that, like very, very young. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we got that, the country strain. Yeah. The time I ever got shredded was because I had been going on like all inclusive vacations with like my buddies. And like, I was always in okay shape, but I always had like a little bit of like, like, you know, hip fat and belly fat. And I was sick of that shit. So literally for like, it must have been four or five months. 
four times a day, I eat chicken breast, brown rice, and green beans. That's all I ate. <laughs> <laughs> and I got peeled. I look like a I look like a men's physique guy when men's physique first started. No, yeah, so yeah. funny, man. That's that's like exactly how I started too, is like when I noticed pudge around my stomach and I got super self-conscious, like 15 years old. Like yeah. freaked freaked me out. I, I saw I see I started seeing my friends get fat. My my friends who were like really rich and they had like all the junk food all the time. I'm like, these guys are getting fucking fat. And I'm like, oh man, like I'm starting to get fat and I would freak out. <laughs> And that's what kind of started the bulimia. It was really weird. But dude, before that, I'd never had a problem with food. I never really thought about it. You know, we would eat it's like normal kids, like, you know, eat candy, eat whatever your parents give you. You don't really think about it. But then once you think about nutrition, it's like you can't ever unthink about it. You know, it's like now, yeah. now you're yeah. just in the game. Now you, now you understand it. Yeah, like I did one prep my first show with a coach who did macros with me. And I learned pretty quick. That if I didn't want to be starving all the time, I just had to eat like whole foods, you know, like chicken, rice, vegetables, like basically oats, I ate a lot of oats and eggs just for the volume of it. It turns out that's a bodybuilding diet and that's why it's a bodybuilding diet, yeah. <laughs> you know, and then, and, and exactly for 20 weeks, I was so obsessed with like macros and like what, what foods have what macros. And, uh, and like you said, it just sticks with you. Mm -hmm. Like once you have that knowledge in your head, you forever look at food differently. And it's kind of hard to get fat because you'll just, when you know what you're eating, you're just like, it's easy to be like, no, nah, I'm good. Like, yeah. yeah. Like for me, it's like, like eating pizza is like twice a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah me too. It, that kind yeah. of shit. Like, you know what I mean? Because it's like, you just know what it's made of. It's not going to do you any good. <laughs> like, yeah. Right. But honestly, like, I don't think, I, I don't think it would, even when I'm done bodybuilding, I think that's the kind of thing that's always going to stick. It doesn't mean that I'm going to push myself to eat as much. Uh, Cause I don't think like, I don't like eating, like I'm not a big eater that much, but I do it because I, I need to for the sport. But I think the structure, I think I'll always have, because it's just, it's so much simpler too. Like you don't really think about it. It's just like you do your thing. You have your things that are structured during your day. Um, I look, maybe I wouldn't eat like six, seven meals a day, but like I would still like eat decent amount of food and that it's very structured and like knowing what we are eating actually like macros and stuff like that, that getting my protein in and all that stuff. Like, I think those are bases that are always going to be there, you know? Yeah, I feel, I think that shit is going to be ingrained in, in us, and like especially even just like hitting your protein, and then like, and then we you know about carbs, like we know it's like okay, I didn't do shit today, I'm not gonna eat a bunch of carbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. like I think like we're, we're never and like people make those remarks to me, it's fucking hilarious. Like when people are like, oh, like what are you gonna do when all that muscle turns to fat? I'm like, well, first of all, it's not how it works, you idiot. No, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I don't know who the how the hell you think that works, like melts or something, but um. But yeah, it's like, I'm going to keep working. The only thing that's going to change for me is I'm not going to compete and I'm going to lose like 50, 60 pounds for like, and like no heavy leg training. Like I got, I, I know I need to keep training legs so that I don't like get pain and stuff like that. Yeah. But like, I'm not fucking putting myself through any more of that shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go in the gym, like upper body sick, like abs all the time. Like that's what yeah, I was. Just make, sure, just make sure you look good in a shirt, you know, like, you know, guns. Well, I want to be like a little excessive. Like I'm still, I'm still going to like, you know, run the odd you know, a little bit of fucking gear, you know, <laughs> probably keep the GH in a three I use, like, you know, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, I think it's more about just like the food, right? Cause like, yeah, uh, bodybuilding nutrition is completely different from health nutrition. So when we, when we shift into our, our later phases, when we're, when we're focusing more on health and not bodybuilding, we just simply won't need to eat as much because, and, and it just goes hand in hand. Like you, like you said, you're not going to be training as hard. So your body's not going to be demanding the same amount of fuel so even though we know what's good for us, we also know what's bad for us. And, you know, technically eating like thousands of grams of carbs every day, like we were talking about before, it's not, it's not good for your body, but that's why it'll, it'll swing back into like more of a balanced approach. Right. So. Out of all the bodybuilders that you guys know, <laughs> who do you think is the least likely to lose weight after they retire? <laughs> out, out of all the current ones, probably like Hassan. <laughs> yeah. he just yeah. can't <laughs> yeah like just, like what the, like i mean like he already eats like no carbs and like just starves on prep and then still has all of his muscle yeah. so i think for him it's going to be really hard to lose that muscle 
Yeah, Hassan Hassan is probably the first one that comes to mind. And then maybe like a Samson or something like that. Like even when he's off, he still looks enormous. You know, it's well, it's, I kind of mean too. Like, who do you guys think out of the guys that you know that like have like the the mentality to like just not let it go? Mm. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think a guy like Hassan is that in 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 that round too. Yeah. Like I, I don't think, know, I think man. that guy's like you think so? I think I, so? I think I think if he could, he would just be like like if he could just like finish his career on a high note, I feel like he would just lose a lot of that muscle. Like he would try to. Maybe he would not try, try to, he but would try, I think... but I don't think I don't think it would be that easy. No, like he diets not. he diets yeah. hard and he doesn't lose anything. Like he stays well. He, like get him shredding for him is really hard, but I mean, like keeping that muscle, he keeps everything. You know, even I just if you don't know if he has like, the mindset of of like wanting to like purposely stay huge because yeah, I kind of feel like Sam or Hassan doesn't give a fuck. And he's like, I don't know, like maybe you think differently, like when you do have like a kid and like that kind of stuff. Like maybe maybe you do, maybe you don't. I don't know. Everybody's different. But I mean, I just mean Hassan is so humble, super humble. Yeah, like he does not give a shit if anyone's looking at him in the gym. He doesn't care about what he wears or like how good he looks. But he goes in there, says hi to everybody, works out, yeah. and leaves. Yeah, you know? super nice guy. Yeah, does yeah. does all of his like stuff he has to do for his sponsors and stuff. <laughs> yeah, like, I feel like when he doesn't need to compete, he's just going to be like, okay, yeah, <laughs> stay, stay huge up by accident. Yeah, I yeah. know uh, it's. It, I don't know, man. Who who do you think would would stay huge? Who do you think would stay huge? Let's see. Out of all of the guys right now, Martin Fitzwater. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, he's a psycho, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I think that that guy would look like, you know, like like Branch still looks like yeah. he could compete. You know, <laughs> yeah, I know. Johnny Jackson too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. These guys are they're still just like they're little still, they're still off, happy, right? man. Yeah, maybe like uh, Nathan. I think Nathan will stay big because he's because he mm. kind of stays big already with his lifestyle, even though it's a little bit more relaxed, and it looks like from what I can tell from when I see his training, like he just like enjoys training. He just goes in there, like just slings weights with the boys kind of a thing. So yeah. I feel like, I feel like that would be like relatively an easy mindset to kind of maintain long-term and stay big. You're talking about Nathan Yasha? Yeah. 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 But I would, I would feel like maybe Nathan would kind of like, I don't know. I have a feeling he would kind of like go off and like, be like, you know what? I'm done. I don't need to do this anymore. Like yeah. he, I, I feel like he's more like, not nonchalant, but like he, yeah, he, I think he, but, he would be the, the type to say, you know what, I, you know, I have a family now, I'm going to take care of them, you know, I want to, I really want to like put all my focus there and like, you know what, bodybuilding. I think he does love training, but the whole like lifestyle of it, I don't, I don't know, maybe it, I, I don't know him personally, so I, I, I'm, it's hard for me to say, but like, yeah, it's more of a guy that I would say would let it go a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, we're totally making shit up, but. But Nathan, yeah, yeah, you know, he like he loves the party, right? You, you know, he's gonna want to have those guns, exactly. Right? Well, that's what this conversation, this conversation is speculation. Obviously, it's just right? jokes, yeah. yeah obviously, yeah, yeah. It's, so. it's it's fun to think about. Yeah, but um, Nathan's an amazing bodybuilder, man. The way yeah, that guy just like yeah. stopped competing for a few years and then just come back, like winning shows, and like like that's that's people don't really realize how special that talent is. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like this guy's dealing with so much shit in life, and like just decides to flip the switch. <laughs> Like gets a couple of surgeries, yeah, for <laughs> you know, sure. back yeah. winning shows where it's like, then there's like some guys like us who are just like trying to be perfect every day for years, leading into oh, a yeah. show like have a chance at winning. Like you I know, know. Yeah, that's that's there's there's people are just some people are just different, man. <laughs> yeah, he's just he's just yeah. made different. It's yeah, it's, it's that argument about like you know whether are you going to be perfect and dialed in and kind of have that like pressure and anxiety about that. Or are you going to be like more of a relaxed mindset and, you know, it is what it is kind of a thing. I think there's, there's pros and cons to both, but it obviously it has to fit your personality. Right. So like you said, everybody's different, but yeah, I mean, what I find to be so rare is someone who has extremely high level talent and a high level of work ethic. Yeah. 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 Like even now I know there's guys competing that could be a lot better. I think if they didn't fuck around. Oh, for them. sure. For sure, yeah, hundred percent. They took it a bit more serious. I think guys that they, they, it's like as soon as they know they're genetically elite, yeah, they start taking shortcuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because they get away with it, you know. Bill Heath did not do that. No, but he—that's that's the reason why also he won seven Mr. Olympias. You know, that, that like you, you combine you combine that talent with with work, and you know you get you get a, a almost like a guy that's almost 
you can't beat, you know? Yeah, like, he's like near perfect, yeah. Yeah, yeah. When he was at his peak, I mean, it was just kind of like, who's up, who else is showing up second, you know? Yeah. I mean, even even Derek is like like similar to Phil Heath in the way that he's like, it seems like he's, he's putting in all the work and he's perfect about most things and he's got the genetics and he's got kind of everything and it just like, I guess everything comes together at that point. And then, hey, you're Mr. Olympia, right? But, Think about all the yeah, guys that, have I, I don't... that fucked around, like like Flex Wheeler. Even like Kevin LeBron, yeah. you could say, because he started taking like half the year off. Or um, yeah. uh, Chris. Cormier? Cormier, yeah, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, like like perfect example of like a guy who like could have been better, but it's all speculation. That's the crazy thing about it. It's like, could Ronnie Coleman have been better if he tracked every macro and not had synthesis shakes and fucking buffalo patties or whatever? Like, I don't know. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. Because <laughs> see, but it's probably it's probably more about what you believe is the best for you. Because that drives yeah. everything, right? Yeah, and then there's a there's a huge component I think that that goes with how mentally you handle these kinds of things. So like if yeah. if Ronnie was kind of like this, um, he was able to go through that and he was you know you know able to train like let's say he would have done everything perfectly, but he wouldn't have trained as hard or he wouldn't have been as as like happy to go in the gym or like or to to, to hold his diet or whatever. I mean, yeah could have made it worse you know it's it's a really hard to tell and especially when you get a guy that's like you know the goat let's say i mean like it's hard to go against that and say well he could have been better you know yeah for sure yeah, i mean it's it's the struggle that we all face because we're seeking perfection and and we all want that to some degree knowing it's not even a reality yeah and and we put pressure on ourselves right like we talk about this a lot on the podcast because that's it's our whole lives revolve around that. i think they just uh mentioned it on on the food podcast that once you kind of give up this bodybuilding thing, it's like you, you have this huge weight lifted off your shoulder. So we're carrying a lot of this, we're carrying this weight. That's it's, it's only our weight. I mean, we've created it all. No one cares how, how much we, you know, no one cares how far we go in bodybuilding. No one cares how much effort we put into this. Only we do. It's yeah. a responsibility. Yeah. We carry to ourselves. Cause like yeah. we set out on this thing to be our best at it. Yeah, yeah. Like we're all determined to like see our best selves, mm -hmm. and it's like until yeah, you, you get yeah. there, you're not going to be okay with anything less than that. that that's kind of how I feel anyway. Yeah, and when you invest so much time in it too, you create that pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like like let's say you do you do your prep and you know you haven't given a hundred percent, the result is going to be like, yeah, you know what, like I'll, I'll handle whatever loss I get if I do get a loss, you know, mm -hmm. but yeah. when you, you, you put everything into it and you know how hard you work and this, that, and you don't get the results that you, you expected, that's kind of the, the pressure that you put on yourself. Right. You know, it's, it's really like, on the expectation that you have. Yeah. I, I can say that I've made mistakes in prep, but I've never said to myself after a show that I didn't give a hundred percent. And I think, and like, you know, if I don't think, I mean, if you can't really say that, then I mean, maybe your first couple of shows and then you get better. But I think if you're like, you're really passionate and like, you really mean what you say about like trying to reach your potential, like that should never be even a thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy when people like even talk about like skipping cardio and shit. I'm just like, I, how could you that. even live with yourself? You fucking piece of shit. <laughs> if if you're in the, the mindset of cutting corners, but you want to be competitive, it doesn't make sense. It's like conflicting mindsets, right? It's like an oxymoron. It's like you're not yeah. going to go far competing, so you're not going to have a good experience. So what's the point? Yeah. Um, uh, in Instagram, Instagram posts. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a thing like uh, bodybuilding and just getting on stage has become like a bucket list thing for a lot of people. I never personally saw it as a bucket list thing. I just originally I wanted to see what I could do, and then I just decided that I would just do it forever. Yeah, but they call something a bucket list thing and then half-ass it. I mean, yeah, I mean, a bucket list thing inherently is like a thing that you're going to do once and then not do again. Yeah, but yeah. just but, but I, I guess what I'm saying is just because you got on stage doesn't mean you did it. No, Anyone for sure, yeah. You can walk, you can go, you can sign up for a show, not prep at all, and walk on stage, right? So I mean, that's a that's a bullshit bucket list. But that's that's relative to what your your again, like what your expectations are, what your your priorities are too. You know, like we see it loud that way because we're very competitive, but some people it's just like, you know what? I got my pictures. Uh, I look better than 
ever, you know, that I've looked mm. in my life. So I'm good, you know, but that's it's like going in a basketball tournament and like knowing you're going to lose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, yeah. I, I tell people all the time that it's the only sport that people will actually like announce the fact that they're going to lose by saying like, mm -hmm. I'm going to train and I'm going to get a top five, you know, yeah. like, I, I just gotta, I just, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, I don't mean to say that to discourage anybody. That I'm not saying, like, if you're not at a certain level, don't compete. I'm All I'm saying is if you're going to do it, give 100%. I don't give a shit what you look like on stage. Just don't fucking cheat and and do your cardio and train hard and, and put your all into it. And then then you can say to yourself that you gave 100%. That's what that's what it's all about. For sure. Yeah. I, I just hate seeing people get, like, disappointed because they don't place the way they felt like they should have. Because for them they did what they could have. And they're like, Hey, I, I did the best I've ever done. Maybe I cheated. Maybe I skipped cardio, but you know, this is way better than I've ever done in my whole life. And they should feel good about that. But then they don't because they might've gotten last in their class or, you know, they didn't get the placing from the judges. So they're getting judged. Then maybe they shouldn't put themselves out there to be judged yet, unless yeah. you're ready to be competitive, but you can always take stepping stones you can set yourself up and do photo shoots and you know you can do things like that where you can set milestones for yourself and achieve goals but again it's like the way i frame it for people especially with the guys that are coming to me and they're like hey man like i want to you know go pro and this and that i mean this is when i'm like okay we gotta you know pump the brakes a little bit and discuss what that entails yeah. because now you're going up against other men or women but they want to dominate you on that stage so that's what we're talking about right like Dude. yeah I have these thoughts all, all like I, I try not to rant on social media about this shit because of how many people talk about like, oh, I want to be pro. Yeah. And that's all I think about. I'm like, you have no idea what that means, man. And I'm like, you got to realize that like at this point in your career, like you're okay with missing a workout here and there. You're okay with missing a meal, making a routine meal. I'm like there's motherfuckers out there that would actually die to have their pro card. Mm -hmm. like that would literally are willing to do anything and are doing everything they can working with a posing coach in the off season running perfect cycles investing tons of money in good coaching you know running farmer grade gh and like you're not even near that so how the fuck do you expect to compete with those people yeah. like you know, it's just not like get come back to reality here for a minute and like ask yourself how far are you willing to go because if you're not as willing to go as far as a guy that's getting third or fourth at nationals you're not going to win mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> you know? yeah yeah, and I think I think it doesn't matter like how good you are. If even if you're like a, a top guy, if you're not able to handle this is good to go back for the judging part. Like if you're not able to handle criticism, like you shouldn't get on stage. It doesn't matter how good you are because like it doesn't mean that you're good that you won't lose. You know, I've I've lost more shows than I've won. You know, what I mean, it's like so, um, you have to be able to take that like criticism and kind of like a rejection thing that you're you might not win the show actually there's more chances you don't win the show than you actually win so uh you know the, that's that's it and that, that comes with also now with social media it's the same thing you're going to get judged people are going to look at your picture they're going to comment on your stuff like it's it's part of it now you know but getting on stage you're exposing yourself to that kind of criticism so you have to be ready for that too yeah exactly yeah I mean, we're all just looking for validation, like at the end of the day to like our work is validated. We did a good job. We look good. We're ready for the next level or whatever it might be. And I mean, it sucks when you don't get that, you know what I mean? But you need to understand, like, unless you're in the 99 or, or like the 1% of genetic elite people, you know, you're not going to have an easy road in bodybuilding. Yeah. You're not going to win your first show. It's probably going to take you four yeah. or five shows before you even win your class, right? Yeah. yeah. What's going on, Joe? What's so, up? Yeah, sorry, Mike. Hey, man. It's all good, man. We're just, we're just bullshitting. We're talking about fucking people that slack off when they do bodybuilding contest preps. Basically. Oh yeah, <laughs> man. I've seen. I've had clients like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, we 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 hate to see clients go down that road. We always want to yeah. save our clients, and and we want them because we have the expectation, like Justin said, we have this expectation about bodybuilding. We think it's it's everything. It's so serious, and not everybody shares that same perception, but you know we can try to share the way we feel about it. And if people kind of understand that they can catch on and be like, Oh man, like, yeah, this is what it takes. Yeah, no, it's true. Like, uh, I think there's a lot of people that get in it for like the, the highlight reel reasons of like what they see on social media. And it just, uh, it's not really a highlight reel all the time. You know, there's a lot of grit work that they kind of don't realize until they do a prep and then they're like, Holy shit. Like, 
I really want to do this. I got to, you know, really enjoy it at, to some degree or else like, why would you do it? You know, because there's yeah. like, it's a 24 seven thing. Actually, I got yeah. a good question. I got a good question. What's your favorite thing about contest prep? Start with Joe. What do you, what do you love about oh. the contest prep part? Um, I think the thing I love the most is that like, I'm like in such a, I'm in such a great routine with everything. Like, not that I don't have a routine in off season, but I feel like you prioritize that routine so much more in prep because you're like, I have to do this, 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 this. And then like, you kind of drown out all the other noise in your life that like could be distracting. And you're just so even on like, even like, you know, business wise or coaching wise or whatever, it's like, you're like so much more focused on that and you allot time to things so much more efficiently um, versus I find like in the off season, it's like, you know, like, you know, even if you're not being like, you know, bad with your diet, you're just like kind of more, you know, a little more relaxed with things and like not as uh, always a hundred percent, but I feel like prep, I'm like, like pretty much like you feel like a, you're like a robot, but like, you're not, you know, you're enjoying it to a degree because you're like, I love the routine. I love being so consistent and like being, you know, even that much more than I would outside of prep. Yeah. What about you, mom? What do you love about prep? Yeah, I would say the same thing. Just like noticing my productivity go up. And like, I remember like my last prep, like my, like again, like my business did better just because honestly, for me, it comes down to just killing time in between meals. <laughs> like I just become, I just want to do things like, you know what I mean? To, to help that time pass yeah. because my business takes up so much of my time. I would just put you know, a lot more time and effort into that and sign a reward. But I also like getting shredded, obviously. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like seeing those changes and like when you reach a new level of conditioning or you hit a new low and like you get your coach's approval, like that's always an awesome feeling, right? Yeah. yeah. What about you, Justin? Yeah, honestly, like I think for me, it's seeing what kind of progress I made during the, because I've never done, I've never been a big fan of like, uh doing shows after show you know mm -hmm. like so I've, I've always taken time to like grow into a into my new and eventually probably we'll get to the point where i i do shows that are a little bit closer especially in the pro league it's a little bit different uh but i've always taken a lot of time to like grow into the, the physique i wanted like like i said in the last podcast you know i did men's physique i did classic so so i had a lot of like bumps that i had to do and then seeing the progress that i made when i really get shredded and see like okay like I'm looking a lot better than the last time I had. So just seeing that progress is, is really fun, you know? Uh, and obviously like, it's just that competitive side. Like you, we're all competitive in, in that, in that, in that sense that we want to see um, how you're, how we're going to do. And like, uh, it's that excitement also of like, okay, who's going to show up and this and that, like in the pros, it's different because you guys know, like, a kind of who's going to show up like in the amateurs you just don't know you're just going to show up and like there's going to be a freak there or not or you're going to be the freak or whatever like it really depends on who shows up and you never know but uh, i think that's the fun part like i'm I'm someone who's competitive i've always been always been that way even like when i played like hockey or like that kind of like competitive sports um so that that the bodybuilding was kind of like that thing where i think i would always even if i wouldn't do bodybuilding i think i would always do something that would be competitive to get me in the gym and like they kind of push me you know um I've even, I've even spoken to people like even if I'm not a fan of like CrossFit and stuff like that I think I would go into something like that just to like have something to like push myself and like really really like go go into like a competitive even if like I know I won't be that good but I would do it you know yeah, yeah. man I, I love uh being backstage like that's a good feeling when you know you kind of did all the work so the work's done, feeling yeah. good right. yeah and you like you you just get situated backstage and you're like all right I've done everything and now literally all I have to do is just wait and you just wait. And it's yeah. just like, it's just like a moment in time where you don't really experience that. Like, it's like almost like a slowdown of time. You know, it's like, you're just fucking here we are, you know, and you just wait for it. And then boom, it just goes by so fast. So I really, I always look forward to that part. I find that really fun, exciting. It was interesting what Justin said about like when you're backstage at uh, nationals, like as an amateur. And like mm -hmm. you kind of know, like right away, like you find out really quick if you have a chance or if you're, yeah, you just yeah, yeah. Time. you know right away, you know right away. I've been, you I've been to shows close, and like, man. yeah, you, you, you've been to shows where you're like looking around, you're like, I think I got this, and then you just have this guy that just shows up. You're like, you know what, fuck it, I'm not, I'm not really. <laughs> I'm <laughs> if you got one guy right walking around, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and sometimes it actually all of us. does the opposite. I've seen it do, do the opposite. I've seen some guys backstage. You're like, holy shit, that guy's crazy. And then you get on stage, you smoke him like he's not even close. You know, I've, I've seen that. Like, that's that's fun, too, you know? 
Yeah. yeah it's always good when you're that guy. Oh, that's yeah. bad. Yeah. So, uh, we've all had that at least once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good shit, man. You can definitely feel that. You you feel when you're that guy because people are fucking looking at you, you know? Yeah, and they come see you often. You know, they, yeah, they'll, they'll, yeah. They come see you like, bro, you What's got up, this, bro? You know? <laughs> you're like, what's yeah. up? You know? It's like, like I remember <laughs> someone looking at me like a group of guys and like I could just kind of see the defeat on their face. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I was just like, yeah. They start congratulating <laughs> you after pre judging and shit. Like, yeah. the early congratulations. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, let's get into some of these questions because we have a lot of would you rathers and i think some of these are actually really funny um <laughs> let me find them yeah That'd be great dude these people are wild some of them i'm not going to be able to do because they're just so fucked up but um <laughs> we still got we still got a lot of other good ones all right so start off with uh, a, a nice mild one would you rather be ripped but small or massive and thick meaning like power lifter or men's physique basically I'd rather be shredded. Uh, yeah, I'd rather be shredded to be honest. I think so too. Yeah, it's just it's yeah, because the amount of food you have to get in to be that big, man. Like we see all these powerlifters, strong man, this that, like their diet. It it looks miserable, man. Well, and just think about it. Like if you're not competing in bodybuilding anymore, like being small and shredded has way more benefits. Yeah, and like and, and the health benefits too. Like yeah, yeah there's health benefits. Else just being girls are gonna like you big, more. Man. You know, you're gonna yeah. be more inspiring, like other men, yeah. you're a businessman. You're that like ripped dude in the office. Like, come on, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that too. That that's true. Actually, people will give you almost. Actually, I don't know. It depends on how big you are. If you're fucking four hundred pounds and huge, like Thor, you're gonna get a lot of respect. But a lot of the times, if you're an average looking powerlifter, it's kind of hard to tell. Like, is that guy a powerlifter or is he just fat? The only people that care about other big guys are like guys who lift. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah you know, that's true. Huge. Like, guys that's are like, true. oh man, you're huge, but like, no one else cares. <laughs> and especially if you're not so like true. in shape big. Yeah. No one cares. Yeah. Oh, and it just yeah. feels like shit, too. It's like yeah, when you, yeah, no, when that, you that, push that, your that, off season, you push that yeah. off season a little too hard. And now you just have to stay like that. You're like, fuck, man. And every time you see it yourself, all you see is your fat face. Your yeah, that's how I live my life, and I hate it, man. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah. that's why I can't I wait to The muffins are getting me there. Don't worry. Uh, I know. Well, you got to hold your fat somewhere, so. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, okay, okay. Um, would you rather have diarrhea for the rest of your life or have Jesus. no teeth for the rest of your life? Oh, teeth. Teeth. Well, can I get can I get false teeth or yeah you could get false teeth. Oh fuck he, he said okay, no fuck yeah. Well he said no teeth of any sort. That can be it. That can be it. It says it there's no teeth, no teeth of any sort. No teeth of any yeah, sort. Yeah, no, it can't be that easy. Yeah, you gotta you gotta go in. straight gum in, gum in it. Take my fucking I, teeth. I'd still I'd still take that one though. Yeah, I'm not shit. What I would you eat myself all the time? Fucking smoothies, man. Forever. Yeah, I'm just sure, like just, I can be shredded. I can be shredded on smoothies. Just, just shakes, man. Shakes, like egg white yeah, juice. Just cook egg whites and swallow them. Slurp them up. Dude. Yeah, you, I think I think you develop like okay. You know what? I'm just gonna like blend everything and like get it in. <laughs> if you guys fucking lose all your teeth, you're not coming on the podcast. It's gonna be so fucking weird looking, man. Everybody's <laughs> laughing. No, like I'm, just gum. I'm not gonna lie. I think I'd take the diarrhea. I think I want to keep my teeth. Yeah, no, that's, that's, there's no yeah. Fucking way. Think about there's it. No at least, so you at can't, least you diarrhea. Can't just, you can't like, but like diarrhea, dude, means just, like you can you just randomly have to shit. Like you got to run to the bathroom before you shit yourself. Like that's real diarrhea. Diarrhea, not just every time you use the bathroom, you have diarrhea. Like you're gonna have to go five times a day. Like and at that point, you know what? At that point, at that point, I think you would get so <laughs> like tired of getting up to go. I think you just get a diaper and just shit yourself. Yeah, I, I prepped. I just get a bed like pan. You're good. Yeah, I did. I did prep like that. All sort of colitis, diarrhea twenty times a day. What for weeks at a time. Yeah, I didn't tell you about that. <laughs> I don't know if you know how bad it is either, Joe. But when you have ulcerative colitis, dude, you you have to go. It's like that. First of all, you lose control of your bowels. It's really scary because you'll just be like, "I have to go now," and you have to bolt it. Like, drop what you're doing. Like, drop everything and read. No, drop everything and go to the washroom. And it's all day, all night. So you just make sure you're always close to the bathroom. I couldn't barely leave my house. Fuck. Yeah. And it's triggered when you consume anything. So I would just be like drink drink water, bathroom, food, bathroom every time, nonstop. But at the point, at that point, you can't train, you can't do anything. It was okay. I still trained. 
Yeah. Well, like there's <laughs> the chances of you shitting yourself and squatting is like Did super you shit high. yourself no, at all when you were training? It never happens when you're training because it's just like the muscles, everything constricts when you're training, you know, but I don't know. I guess maybe I got lucky, but it did give me some, some fear because um, I felt like that would be a possibility on stage. But I think for whatever reason, it's like when you're doing something strenuous, your body somehow knows like now's not the time, <laughs> you know, Yeah. <laughs> like like there would be times where I was in the car and I'd have to drive. I mean, I drove to the Pickering like 45 minutes, an hour, and I had to stop a few times. And that was pretty, pretty bad um but but yeah i mean i mean on the side of the road it's still on top of you but i'm going on a rant but let's just keep it simple and say i could deal with the diarrhea because at least i have my teeth and i've already dealt with it before i would just have to live forever like that (laughs) okay next question (laughs) all right um would you rather be the best coach in the world or be mr o once where did Justin go? I'd probably take the Olympia title. Yeah, I think I would too. Yeah, I think so. I think you could do a lot more with the Mr. Olympia than being the best coach in the world. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, you can if you know how to play that, your card's right. You can do a lot with that. Well, yeah. think... so, you know, <laughs> Justin. I'm sure, the money yeah. would be good being the best coach, but I mean, still, yeah. you still got I mean, to coach. I mean, you know what? It's pretty dope if you're like you have like Bonnie. And you have like I don't know how many Mr. Olympias that you've coached. Yeah, but bro, do you want to coach the man or do you want to be the man? Would you rather be Jay Cutler or would you rather be Honey Rombod? I mean, I think yeah, it's, but yeah, would you but rather Jay be Jackson wants... Jackson or George Farah. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> no, George Farah is not the best coach in the world. No, 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 no. Honey, yeah, true. I, I think I think I'd go with Mr. O, man. You know? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. If you're Mr. O, you could just pretend to be the best coach in the world. Be like, yeah, fuck yeah, I know everything. Bro. <laughs> yeah, you can easily branch into coaching after you fucking win that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. Would you rather have your dream physique forever, so you can look like whatever you want forever, or would you rather have just endless money? Money. Money. Yeah, money. money. But if you have your dream physique forever, you have money forever. Cause you'd be 85 no. with a body like that. Yeah, I still gotta you still gotta work though, man. Like you no. there's a lot of guys with crazy. No, you don't. Dreams. Dude, yeah, you think don't. about it. My, your dream physique isn't necessarily gonna be like a life changing thing. There's lots of guys with like their dream physique. If I look like Mark, if I if I if I look like Mark's rule, I can I can I can maintain my physique pretty good, you know, and you know, just go for the money. I'd be I'd be okay with that. And you know what? Even if it's not great at eighty, I'm good. You know, what no, I mean? like, you got to be. You got. You can't work out. You can't work out. You, you, a limited money. For the, a limited money for the rest of your life, but you can't work out. Yeah. Or your dream physique. Go for the physique, baby. That's what we've been working for. We don't do this for the money. <laughs> I, I'll just. I'll just become a marathon runner. Fuck it. I want the money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess if you have the money, you could actually just live forever. You know. True. And funny, you'd be like literally fucking. Yeah, you don't gotta eat like an asshole. Yeah, no. Yeah, you eat good, no, walk so around, easy. shit. Money still, yeah. You know, maybe yeah. accidentally do a few push-ups here and there. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> cheat. <laughs> Fell into this. Yeah. Um. Would you? Okay. Fucking. Would you rather be vegan for life or carnivore? No. Meat, meat only. Carnivore. Carnivore. Yeah. Yeah. Carnivore for sure. I don't sure. think I'd give up meat. The yeah. problem, with, you know, the problem I have with vegan is that you're so limited. Like you can't eat like barely any protein sources. So what the fuck, you know? Yeah, yeah it's it's things. crazy. Like they have to eat so much food too, just get enough nutrients. Well, I mean, yeah. carnivore is limited too. If you're if you're really carnivore, you're only eating meat. But I still think it's you have more benefits of doing that than the opposite. Yeah, some of those carnivores are full of shit. They'll eat like a like a fucking mango or something. Yeah, like that's not, not carnivore. <laughs> technically <laughs> fucking free. Uh, I, I would, I, I would might go vegan like... though because vegans got like they got good desserts. You know, they make the black bean <laughs> like brownies and shit. That's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. True. Yeah. Oh, so, that'd be bad if you got like a, a sweet craving or something. Like you just you wanted carbs and you just can't ever eat them again. 
you're gonna have to rely on like some type of like i got like a maple bacon like seasoning yeah it's like the closest you're getting to like candy if you're a carnivore put that, <laughs> put that on your stick <laughs> um okay this one's fucking gross would you drink would you rather drink one liter of piss or one liter of sweat like what the fuck man like, who thinks of that like why that's a good question your own your own or someone else's I guess it would be your own because it doesn't say so you can pick. Just drink a lot of water and then it's like watered down pee, so it's like drinking water. I'd say I do pee, yeah. That's true. Okay, I'm going with the pee. Yeah. I go with yeah. The pee. yeah. Like, like hot sweat. If everybody's it's going with the pee, pee, then I don't feel bad about going with the pee. Yeah, yeah I, I think the sweat would be, would be worse, man. Sweat. It'd be like super salty and like oh, no, yeah, no, dude. Like oh. weird. Yeah, if you're on, if you're on trend, your sweat has that like kind of like <laughs> metallic taste. <laughs> yeah, I got some oh, shit. Yeah. Like I don't want to drink that now, man. <laughs> Not a chance. Um. All right. Would you rather sleep with female Antoine or male Fuad? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? This is this is fucking David, this by the way. So. Real South, real quick. Yeah. <laughs> female Antoine. Yeah. Ant- Antoine's my boy. I'm definitely gonna go with him. 100 percent Antoine was a pussy. Yeah, I feel like I feel like I would pick that over Fumad for sure. I think Antoine yeah, would probably make it a good time, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd do that too. <laughs> I don't think I don't think there's there's any other option because it's literally just a girl or a guy. Like that's yeah, yeah. Should have I mean, made, made that one a little bit harder. I, well, listen, yeah. if we change it, if we change it to uh, man and man, does it change the different? The change your answer? If they're both both female, no, they're no, both, both men. Men. I guess it does change it then. Well, I'm still going. With, I'm still going with Antoine. I think uh, so then, I'm, then I'm going with Fuad because then I could I could get on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> sacrifice, oh, sacrifice without regret. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> 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 oh, <man. laughs> I just got it. Uh, uh, all right. Would you would you rather time travel through cardio or have someone take your weight plates on and off for you all the time? That's a good one. That is a good one. That's a good one. I'd probably in go. Lot, for in prep, I'd rather have in someone prep, take plates off. Yeah, yeah. In prep, I would have someone to take my weights off. I'm skipping cardio for sure. But think about the leg days. But I get to skip cardio, so I have tons of energy to take plates off. That's true. I like cardio though. Sometimes I'm not skipping it. I guess I guess I'm I'm tra- I'm time traveling through it. So yeah, so. just like instant instant cardio done. Yeah, you're still tired. You're just you're, you're still just, gonna feel it. You just yeah. You I just don't know. Some days you get up and prep, and there's like an hour cardio between you and meal one. Like those days are rough sometimes. You know. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I guess taking off your weights is never really that hard to do. It's just a general annoyance. Whereas cardio it's can really, annoying. yeah, in prep it's fucking annoying. It is, but when you have to do that one hour fasted, one hour post workout as well, you would love to just be able to skip that. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I don't even take off my plates anyway. <laughs> 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 I don't even. This is easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> Let someone else worry about it. Well, that's the culture up here anyway. Yeah. All right. All right. Um. All right. Let's do a couple more here. Switch it up. What is or who who was the first pro bodybuilder that you ever met? If you can remember that, Jose Raymond. That's a good, that's a good question. Jose Raymond, where, where, and when? He guest posed at our twenty fourteen Newfoundland Provincials, and I was backstage with him. We were getting tanned at the same time, and he, he told me he had nice abs and good legs, and he actually gave me the best legs award at that show. Oh, nice. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. That was cool. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think the first one I met was Fidel Clark. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He Canadian guy, right? Yeah. 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 yeah Mine, I think, was uh, you know that black guy, uh, uh Franz Pivadi. Nope. No. He he used to be. Uh, he he doesn't compete anymore. He did two twelve for a little while. A huge black guy. He he had oh. he had awesome genetics. Um, he never re- wasn't really like a hard worker or anything, but had really had like uh, like in the gym you'd be like holy shit like this guy's gonna win a pro show, you know. But uh, yeah, I was I think I was like sixteen I think when I saw him. Uh, I was super young, but I think uh, or seventeen because I, I had just started the gym. 
but uh yeah like that i think that's the first guy but like not really i didn't really have an interaction with him because i was like so shy um but uh yeah i think that was the first one I think, I think the first pro that I met was either Mike Van Wick or Steve Kuklo. I just, I can't remember which one I met first, but I had at one point met them and got their autographs each at one point. That that was pretty cool. Meeting, meeting Steve, I was like fucking blown away at the time. Yeah. Just like how fucking round. Yeah. Same thing with Mike, honestly, actually back then he had some fucking boulder shoulders, man. I remember like, this is, I don't even know if you guys remember what Mike looked like, but. Um, I think I've seen a couple stage shots of him. I've never seen him in person though when he was huge. Yeah, I I had this one poster of Mike. Um, it was like Six Star Nutrition, like that that off brand, like from Walmart or something. But he had like I remember he had like stars on his shoulders, and he didn't have that many tats yet. But his fucking shoulders were like so round, and I was just like, "Hey, Mike, can you sign this?" He's like, "Yeah, sure, here." I'm like, fuck, so cool, man. It's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds just like him. Yeah, I know. Um, all right. How much T3 do you add to GH? And does it depend on the amount of GH used? Do you guys even use T4? I don't know. Uh, Not in the off season. No. I use T4, yeah. Like more so in uh in like contest prep, but yeah. Yeah, last yeah. year or last prep was the last the first time that I ever used T4 concurrently with T3, because usually I would just use like a T3. Um yeah. But I, I don't I don't think it depends on like how much GH you're using necessarily. I, I think T4 maybe is is more for like if you have low thyroid, um, because that's what it's usually prescribed for. But generally bodybuilders would just use T3, and that's what's gonna more or less do the, the fat burning that you're looking for. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, the only yeah. time I used T3 was last prep, and I used it for uh Vancouver only. Um, and I think I used it for three weeks, something like that. Would you do like 12.5? Uh, no, I actually did. Uh, I I got up to fifty. I got up to fifty. Yeah, but I did. Like I said, I did. Uh, I did maybe like twenty five the first week, and then went up to like fifty, and then that's it. I finished my. And then a week, like almost five days before the show, I I stopped it. So I didn't do it very well. I I think I personally like T three because I've done preps without it, and I found that I just had to bring my calories down so low. Not when you do have T3 in it, you can kind of keep your calories slightly higher and yeah. still get just to shred yeah. it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I have done 100 micrograms of T3. Actually, Joe, that was the for the 2016 Nationals, that, that picture that you posted. Um, yeah. And saying that it was stacked. I, remember I was trying to get into the heavyweights that year, and I was using 100 micrograms of T3 to get shredded, and I, I just missed it by like half a pound or something. But, yeah, that year I got smoked. I got 11th place that year, and I think you were flat. Fourth. I think I got, yeah, I got fifth. Yeah. I was like, I remember I was like sweating balls on stage and they moved me to the outside. <laughs> but Robin, were you flat from all that T3? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I fucking super flat. flat. So much. I was yeah. so flat that they even gave me like 45 minutes to go and try to lose that half a pound. And I went and I tried to do cardio and I didn't sweat at all. I didn't lose anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, but you know what? That was actually, I was really happy with that because I ended up in the super heavyweight. So I'm like, yeah, I'm big. So even though I got 11th, <laughs> I wasn't too upset about it. <laughs> yeah. So we had Dana Baker first in the super heavyweights that year. Then it was Johnny Duel in second, I believe. And then um, Joey, Joey Pianca. Joey Pianca. Yeah. Third. yeah. There was then, another French guy in there too. I forget his name. Oh, yeah. Who, what year was that? 2016. 2016. Oh. Yeah, I, I know. I can like think of him, but I don't know his name. Yeah, he was a bit older too. I think. Yeah, but man, just stacked, stacked classes. I would love to see a, a like a nationals or a Toronto Pro qualifier with us with a super heavyweight class like that. Yeah, there was like thirty guys. It was like yeah, but <laughs> these, these are the guys more. like because I remember Johnny switched to to classic like a little while after that. Um, like these are guys that like. We're, we're losing these guys to the classic division yeah. because these guys could be crazy super heavyweight bodybuilders, but they just, you know, the weight cap, so you don't get that big. But crazy. Um, let me see if we got any more. Mm. All right. Would you rather eat only tomatoes or only potatoes? I, I asked Mo this before. 
potatoes, I think. They like potatoes, yeah, because you can do more with potatoes. Yeah. Yeah, you can. It just sucks because you can't have pizza sauce and you can't have ketchup. Mm. You know? So you can do different sauces on pizza, you know. Yeah. 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 So yeah. you chicken pizza, let's go. No I'm marinara. Pizza guy, yeah. 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 Yeah, burger and fries over pizza all day. Okay, how about this? If you could only eat rice or only eat potatoes? Rice. Rice for sure. Rice for sure. Yeah. I don't even eat potatoes. Eat potatoes when I have French fries. That's it. Okay. Yeah. White potatoes or sweet potatoes? White. I think yeah, white potatoes. I feel yeah. I, I can't. Have you guys ever put have you guys ever put cinnamon and peanut butter on a sweet potato? Yes. I've tried cinnamon. I've never tried peanut butter though. Oh, it's good shit. No. Just try it yeah. out. Yeah, I would just like take all the potato like out of the peel so there's no peel. And, like put the cinnamon pink salt on it and then melt some peanut butter on top. It's like pretty much a dessert. Yeah, it's good. It's it's it sounds more like it sounds like more like a snack when you're pregnant though. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you trying to say? <laughs> I got high estrogen I'm or something like that. Maybe, maybe maybe up the the the, the arabidex, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm on, I'm on aromas and I actually care about my cholesterol, bro. Okay. Yeah, so I, I have you know. So maybe I should. I don't know. I have been feeling a little bit emotional lately. <laughs> yeah, sweet oh, potato peanut butter waiting for me over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, would you? Okay, Mo, you don't have hair, but if you could have hair, the rest of us. <laughs> would you rather have a mullet or a ponytail? Mullet. Yeah, same. Ponytails. Well, mullets, mullets are cool now, so I guess that's a pretty easy one. Yeah, I feel like yeah, yeah mullet. Yeah. Ponytail, it, it's like you probably wear a trench coat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like you play a lot of video games. Okay. How about this one? <laughs> you either can have your hair back, but you lose your beard, or you can keep your beard, but you don't get hair. Give me my hair. I don't. I shave. What, what about I you? Keep get? the beard, man. No, yeah. Fuck the hair. I want the beard. You got a nice beard, though, God, for, uh, Joe. So. I think I keep the hair. I don't Thanks, really man. care about the beard so much. <laughs> Split 50 50. I got the hair, I lost my beard. It's gone, dudes. Gone, yeah, gone. I, I would just I would just look 15 though, but that's fine. Yeah. You're 15, bro. You're six. No, but you mean like, like, like 380. If I take this off, I take this off, dude. I look I look super young. I, I actually legitimately can't grow a beard anymore. It's pretty sad. Really? Oh yeah. I got alopecia and I lost all of my facial hair, almost all of it. I That's weird that you have so because you have a good mustache, man. That's all I have, though. I can't no, get I anything. That. I can only get here on my chin, but all of my neck and here is gone. It's How really would that weird. work, though? Just on the chin, here. Yeah. I know, so I can just have like a goatee, basically, and that's it. So I got um, a strap, basically. It's not good. Hey, I, I, I get like a, like a kind of like a chin strap. Like I don't get a lot like on the cheek. Like it's not very full. And uh, I, my girlfriend finds me less attractive when I have a beard, so it's just not optional for me. Yeah, yeah. I started I started having a beard when I started test. I, <laughs> I had nothing before. <laughs> oh, another another W for test. Yeah, everyone should take test. Wait, so what? What age were you guys able to grow a, a full beard? Twenty five, thirty one, twenty six. Late bloomer. I was like early twenties. I think. Justin, how old are you? Twenty eight. Crazy. 28. Oh, okay. Did you turn pro when you were 27? Yeah. Well, yeah. Like late 27 because it was in July. I, thir- nice. I, I, I turned Same. I Same. turned 28 in uh October. Yeah, I, I turned I turned 28 two months after I turned pro. Uh so same wild. I turned pro at 26. Ooh. Yeah. One year ahead of us. I know. <laughs> Tough guy. I, I was I was trying to chase Regan. I think he was like the youngest at the time. But I remember. I think Regan was, was like twenty four or something. Yeah, I know. Now there's that kid that's like nineteen. He, he turned pro. It's like classic. Like what the fuck? Yeah, but classic. <laughs> classic. I guess, classic. Yeah. Fucking small. So is, is Regan still the the youngest um, guy to turn pro in bodybuilding? No, I think uh, Ian was. How yeah. old was Ian? Twenty four. Ian was like twenty. He's 22 or 23. 22, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That guy, uh, that guy uh, Gabriel, I think, turned uh, 23, I think. Yeah, true. Yeah, so Gabriel's yeah, pretty yeah. young, too, yeah. 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 Either way. You just don't see it as much in bodybuilding, like, below 25. Mm-hmm. Like, most guys aren't 
turning pro that young, you know? Takes yeah. time. Takes yeah. time. It takes time to put on that size. Yeah. 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 Still at the frame. You either gonna have crazy genet genetics or start young, you know? Yeah. 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 Um would you rather have to give up your shampoo for the rest of your life? I guess Mo, like what, what the fucking hair <laughs> question. I'm out, I'm like, out of all of these. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't you fucking watch the show? <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see if we got any good ones here. Would you rather have really bad gas or always have really dry mouth? Dry mouth. I'd take that. Yeah. Yeah. That's like that's like not too bad. It's like kind of annoying, but like bad gas is worse. Yeah, yeah. that's way worse. <laughs> yeah, that's I, think math, I just bring back like the gallon jug, just carry around the gallon jug with me everywhere. Yeah. We all yeah. have that phase, you know? Yeah. Bring it back. Yeah, bring it back. Yeah, I remember <laughs> having bad gas, man. Fucking mutant mass. I used Ooh. to call it, I used to call it mutant gas because it was just yeah. Dude, terrible. I remember stinking out a couple of gyms in prep, man, from the eating like a lot of green beans and stuff. And like you just go to the gym and fart, and like he just lingers for like ten minutes. <laughs> you know, you're like the, you're like the shredded guy eating the weird diet. Everyone knows it's you. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was at the I was at the gym yesterday training, and I and I walked through like someone just like let one rip, and I walked right through it, and then like three or four people walked by, through it behind me, and they're like, "Oh my god, someone let it rip!" I'm like, "Fuck!" They they definitely thought it was me. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. When you're huge, you can just do what you want. Yeah, exactly. I'm just yeah, like, oh, no. Yeah, you can just do oh, what well. you want. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. Do you, do you guys, um, do you guys, like, are you guys gassy? Like, because I don't find, like, I'm very gassy, to be honest. Like, I, I feel unless, like. Not unless it's, like, after, like, you eat something that's, like, uh, you know, like, certain cheat meals and there's something in there that yeah. makes it bloated. Yeah. But, like, yeah, cheap meals, on a regular cheap basis now. Yeah. 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 I used yeah to be... I'm definitely more gassy in prep. Like, yeah, I would say so too. Yeah, more bloated and things yeah. like that too. Definitely more digestion issues and prep for me than than any. Yeah. One thing I had a lot of issue with my last prep, I, I had no idea what was going on for a while. I was waking up every morning with these like really bad like gas pains, and it turns out it was it was bell peppers. Yeah, okay. I was eating really? bell peppers like two or three times a day. Like, I was cooking them up pretty good on the pan, but then as soon as I talked to Dorian about it, because uh, you know he's like, kind of my go-to guy for any stuff like that. Yeah, told him I died, and that's all he said. He was like, "Take out the peppers." And as soon as yeah, I, it does the same thing for me. Yeah, I can't handle that. Yeah, I so said I just switched to zucchini, and I had no more issues after that. Really. Yeah, I can't handle the the peppers either. Yeah, I like them though. It's too, you know, they're good in prep. It's kind of like a little sweet like thing you get to have with your meal, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's hard, hard sacrifice. <laughs> Dude, the thing like zucchinis, I only ever eat them in prep, and I eat so many of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't ate a vegetable since my last show. I don't think. So. Like you know when you're deep, you know when you're, you know when you're deep in prep and you're going to the grocery Jesus. store like and you're ringing out like twenty five dollars of zucchinis like every other day, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no uh, calories at all. Yeah, it's, that's awesome. I love. That. Yeah, no. After I couldn't look at a zucchini. As soon as I was done competing, like I, I like laughed as I walked past the vegetable section. It's like no, <laughs> no way I'm buying any more of that shit. Like don't need to. Just plain chicken and rice. I'll drink green powder twice a day. See you later. Oh, okay. Would you rather fuck the top half of Emma Watson with the bottom part of Hulk Hogan or the top half of Hulk Hogan with the bottom half of Emma Watson? Top half Hulk. <laughs> top yeah. half Hulk, baby. Bend him over. <laughs> yeah. I think I, if I was banging Hulk Hogan and looking at him in the eyes, I'd probably just laugh. <laughs> it wouldn't be that bad from behind, though, because he's got that nice long blonde hair and everything, you know? Yeah, yeah. just turn the lights <laughs> off. It's the same thing. That old leather skin back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but is it like Hulk Hogan in his prime, or is it him now? Like, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if it makes a difference, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying he wouldn't feel like it'd be like an old, old fucking dude versus like I don't know. Yeah, his hair is not really. Is it still blonde or is he like gray now? I think he's still rocking Honestly, the it's, it's not it's not yeah. a win either way you know you know these guys man they never let go they never let go of like the true job, like keeping their hair tied like rick flair for example man yeah that guy was, like what like on the line of death and he is just like <laughs> woo like, doing coke, like fucking wearing his like big jackets around and shit it's crazy man oh my god like Seriously, some of these are so fucked up. I, I kind of want to tell you guys, but like afterwards. Um do one do one bad one. Do one fucked up one. 
This one I definitely can't say, but I, I'll do this one. Um, would you rather be the smartest person in the world or the stupidest person in the world? In both scenarios, you have the same level of intelligence you have now. I don't get it. I don't get Basically, it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. you stay the same. You're you're as smart as you are now. Stays the same, but either everybody else in the world gets stupid and oh. you become the smartest, or everyone else is way smarter than you and you're the dumbest. I think smarter. I mean, you're gonna make a lot more. Like, there's more possibility of you going up in terms of like making more money and stuff. Dude, like that, Justin, right? just think about this for a second. Okay? No, I understand. I understand what you're saying. I understand think about what's gonna happen to the world if. You